had covered socialism on the first episode. This time, we'll focus on capitalism. By definition, capitalism is an economic system based on the private ownership of the means of production. Basically, the economy is run by private businesses or individuals like me and you for profit. A way to do that is to have a free market, a system in which the prices of goods and services are dictated solely by supply and demand, without third-party intervention. If a product is in hot demand, the price goes up, and the market may be incentivized to produce more of it. If a product is unwanted, the price goes down, and the market may produce less of it. The price would eventually find an equilibrium, achieving maximum market efficiency. When we say intervention, it could mean in the forms of taxation, price control, tariffs, welfares, regulations, social programs, bailouts, price fixing, or anything that distorts the price of this beautiful equilibrium. In reality, there are no pure forms of free market in today's world. If there were, it'll be called laissez-faire. This term is self-explanatory in French. Leave us alone. It calls for the authority to straight up leave the market alone and let companies and individuals conduct business in the most efficient way possible. It is by preserving competition that businesses will have no choice but to provide better products and services at more competitive prices. A popular belief is that limited regulations would lead to price gouging or labor exploitation. Nobel laureate economist Milton Friedman offered his rebuttal. The real protection that a worker gets is the existence of more than one possible employer. That's what gives him freedom. That's what enables him to get the full value of his services. It's competition. It's a free market in which you have a diversity of sources of employment, which provides the effective protection to the worker. So in every area, what protects the worker, what protects the employer, what protects the consumer is always the existence of variety and alternatives. Classical liberalism is a political ideology that favors the protection of individual liberty and economic freedom by limiting government power. Within it, there are two subcategories, neoclassical liberalism and libertarianism. There are differences? Frankly, few people knew, few people cared. But if you must, neoclassical liberalism is simply a revival of classical liberalism during the 80s. It too advocated for limited governments, but with a revised willingness to accept the state in being an active participant in the economy. Libertarianism is similar to classical liberalism, but takes the concept to an extreme level. When someone is identified as a libertarian, it's a sign that he or she strongly believes individuals should be left alone. Personal responsibility is the most powerful ingredient to success. They also dislike the welfare state, because the inefficiency of government and the exposure to manipulation do more harm than good to the people they intended to help. It's by harnessing self-interest that the society would benefit most. Now, imagine capitalism and socialism had an odd child. You would name it state capitalism. It is an economic system that is primarily capitalistic, but there is some degree of government ownership of the means of productions. It is in essence capitalism, whereas its socialistic part would be characterized by both its state-owned enterprises and state influence over its private sector. For a prime example, look no further than China. The economy adopted this model during the 80s, when the paramount leader of China, Deng, gradually opened up the Chinese market economy. But wait, didn't China identify their system as socialism with Chinese characteristics? Why would it adopt a capitalistic model? Aren't they paradoxical in nature? Deng justified it by saying, Marxist theory never said the abolishment of capitalism had to come immediately. Deng claimed that it was necessary for China to generate enough prosperity before morphing into a socialist system. And the way to do that was none other than good old capitalism. You could say it is technically still consistent with their brand of socialism, or if you don't buy it, then it's merely capitalism in denial. So you see, it really doesn't matter how countries self-proclaim. It's what they're actually doing and what you believe in which matter most. Rather than seeing them as different interpretations, they are more like nuances or evolvements from one another. Libertarians also think what the modern world has today isn't true capitalism, but instead crony capitalism. 
Note that there are many models that didn't make it to the diagram. Also, sizes of circles, positions, and all sorts of axes could have been introduced based on your own perspective. So, which is the superior economic system? Socialism or capitalism? Well, enjoy some laissez-faire time and figure it out on your own. If you learned something new in this video, click subscribe and the bell icon to get notified for similar weekly interesting content. For instance, what's the difference between socialism, communism, Marxism? Click on last week's video and I'll set the record straight in 5 minutes. If there are specific topics you want me to cover, comment below. See you next week.